the next UI 2.0 is built on top of Telvin CSS instead of style components or CSS in JS, which required JavaScript runtime on the client side to shape and form our CSS, which made it impossible to use it with the new paradigm of React server components in Next.js 13's app router. But since the version 2.0, they have switched to Telvin CSS, which is good because Telvin is awesome, but also it no longer requires JS runtime for our CSS components. Therefore, we can use it right inside of our app router in Next.js 13. In this video, I will walk you through how you would set it up inside a Next.js application. And we're going to build this little card component together, which I took from the homepage we're going to see in a second. But uh, what we're trying to show in this card component is the built-in ability or feature for theming in Next UI. So we have this card component with different sizes and stuff, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But up there you can see I have different themes. So it comes built in with the light and dark mode out of the box. And you can also uh, add more themes like the modern theme that I have added here, which changes the colors from the foreground to the background and changes uh, border radiuses and stuff like that. So you can switch between different themes. Now I've started with a brand new Next.js application. It's using Tailwind out of the box because Next UI package uses Tailwind. So you would need Tailwind under the hood. It's using TypeScript and pretty much everything else other than adding some prettier formatting options is what you get out of the box when you're running the Next.js script. Now let's go to Next UI documentation where we can follow the installation kind of guide from Next UI. Now you need to install the Next UI React package, but also the Framer Motion package because for their transitions and animations, they're using Framer Motion, so you need to install both. I'm using PNPM, so uh, there is an extra step for PNPM. I'll mention it in a second, but you can just copy the script and install the two packages. I've already done that, so you can go ahead and install if you're just following along with me. Now, once you've done that, you have to go to your Telvin config and actually add this uh, node module folder to your content so Telvin will pick up on it. And you'd also uh, put in this dark mode class because as I mentioned, Next UI comes with light and dark mode built in out of the box. So you just specified that dark mode class. And then you would get this Next UI function uh, from the package you installed and then pass it to a plugin. This is actually where you would pass in any customization that we're going to see later on in the video. For example, if you want to customize your themes from the light and dark or this modern theme that I've added, this is actually where you would pass those customizations. But for now, just leave it bare bone, just pass in the plugin with the next UI function, just call that function without passing anything to it. And then you get the default behavior out of the box. Now, it's essential to add the next UI provider to the root of your application. And the way that we do it is through the providers pattern that we've seen uh, before in previous videos where we are sharing a context throughout our Next.js app or specifically in the app router where we create this providers file, which is a client component. And there we would just uh, create a wrapper around all of our child components. These are going to be our uh, React server components, pages, and other nested layouts. A common question that I often get uh, when people see this, we're wrapping the whole application with a provider or with a component that's a client component, they doubt that our whole application now turns into a client component. Just to clarify, if you import a server component into a client component, it becomes a client component. So it, um, imagine this use client directive that you're defining up top. It's a boundary between the server and the client. If you import any component, once you've defined this use client boundary, it becomes automatically a client component. However, you can pass server components as children, as we're doing it here, or as props to client components without changing them to client components. So it's okay to pass server components as children or as props to client components, but you cannot import them inside client components. Just a little side note because this is a common question I get on the videos. Now, once we have created this, we're going to come back to this file because we're also using this next themes, which is a uh, 
a way for us to switch the themes. It has nothing to do with the next UI provider. So you can just ignore this part uh, for now. I'm, I'll go, I'm going to come back to this. Uh, for now, we're just creating this provider's uh, component, which takes in a children and then uh, wraps that children with this next UI provider. Now we're going to bring this providers back to our root layout where we can pass this, uh, bring in this providers to our root layout and then wrap everything else uh, as these children's inside of this providers. Again, here I'm just passing in a header and inside of this header, if I go back to the site, I'm just rendering this home. It really doesn't do anything. It's a link to go to the home page. There is no different page on this app. And then I'm using also this theme switcher, which we're going to get into when we talk about the next themes package to switch between the themes. I'm wrapping my children pages or nested layouts inside of this main tag and a footer. So pretty straightforward layout. The main point, point is to wrap it with these providers where we are actually sharing uh, any global context using React context, okay? So let's save this out and go back to the next step. Um, I mentioned that there is a, an extra step if you're using the PMPM PM package. So you'd have to create a an NPM RC file inside of your application and then paste in this code. And then you have to run the PMPM PM install again. This is going to get rid of your node modules package and reinstall the dependencies so it works correctly. If you're not using PMPM, PM, forget about this. I am, so I have created this one as well. Okay, so that's all we needed to set up our application to use the next UI package. Here in the docs, it also explains if instead of a global installation, you wanted to do an individual installation of different packages that comes within the next UI library, go ahead if, if that's what you wanted to do. But with this setup, basically you can now go ahead and use any of the components that comes from the next UI package and you can just get them from that specific uh, module so you're not importing all the components, you're just getting what you want. So let's actually use these components inside of our app. If I go back to my homepage, you can see that I've created a little simple component that uses this card. It is from here, so the card component. And you can see in the docs, you know, different values and different props that you can pass to each one of these components and different variations that they have and how you can customize their styling because it uses Tailwind Utility classes under the hood. You can also pass in your own classes. As you can see here, I'm passing in my own classes to this card component. So I have the card body. I have the image. This is the image of this shoe that I got from the next UI. By the way, let me just show you what I'm trying to build over here. On the home page, you can see this little card component. Um, I'm attempting to build something like this. It doesn't look as nice as this, but close enough for you to understand how to implement these different themes. So I'm rendering this image and then I have this product size component, which is just a little client side component with this estates for holding this selected size, um, nothing next UI specific. And down here, I'm using the button component from next UI. You can pass in different props, such as the color, the variant, the size, the radius, to define the shape of your button. And then later on, we can also define uh, the default values for different themes for the border radius, for the colors, for the text colors, and whatnot to actually customize the themes or add a new theme. Now, before diving into customizing our themes or adding more themes, let me just show you this theme switcher or the reason why we should need to use this. Now, the way Next UI actually implements the light and dark theme under the hood is using Tailwind's dark utility uh, directives. So if you go to the documentation for Tailwind and search for dark mode or dark theme, you would see that Tailwind actually supports this dark variant out of the box, where if you add this dark mode class, it looks up to see if it can see a class attribute set to dark on a parent element and then applies this dark variant to your component. So for example, if you have this HTML, this is your 
HTML tag and you have this background white and background black if the theme is dark on this div well right now it's going to be background white but if you pass in a class of dark to the any parent of this div which is typically implemented on the HTML tag so it uh, includes everything else or all the components now Tailwind automatically applies this dark variant and turns the background to black for this now if you're not comfortable with uh, how to actually do this in Next.js. I do have a video on the channel where we implement a uh, dark theme in Next.js 13 using the next theme package. I'm just going to explain the process quickly here, but if you want to dive deeper and understand what's going on with that package and how to set that up, you can. Uh, I'm going to include a link in the card so you can watch that video first. So first thing that we would need, as I mentioned, is to install the next themes package. This is the package that you'd have to install. And once you install this, again, going back to our root layout, where we were including some providers uh, for our page, we're going to actually also look at this theme provider we got out of the next themes. Uh, you'd have to, or you can pass in some props to this theme provider. For example, we wanted to set the class attribute because you can also use it to set data attributes on your HTML tag. Because Tailwind CSS works with the class attribute, we're going to set next themes to switch the class attribute. You can pass in a default theme. And if other than the light and dark, you're also supporting any other different themes, you'd have to pass it to this provider. If light and dark is the only two themes that you want to provide, you don't have to pass in this prop. This is only because I'm passing in or uh, creating a modern theme as well. So inside of that same providers that we had the next UI provider, we're just going to wrap our app with this theme provider as well. And now to have a toggle or a switch to switch between these themes inside of my component, I have this theme switcher component, which is again, a client component where I'm using this use theme hook from the next theme package and I'm using this set themes to pass in click handlers to my buttons to switch the theme the theme between light dark and modern so this is what we see up there uh, you can implement it however you want it can be buttons it can be a select menu but you get the idea you can just use that a little quick note about this state that I'm using and this use effect you should only as per the documentation, use this use theme provider or this uh, theme switcher or the toggle only if this component is mounted on the client. Because before that, we have no way of knowing what the selected theme or the preferred theme is because the next themes package also reads uh, from uh, the user's device to know what's their preferred theme. So it only needs to be uh, mounted if the component is mounted so we're just checking to see if the component is mounted if it's not we're returning null if you're mounted we have access to the preferred uh, user's theme and then we can render this and that's all there is to it to implement next ui in your next.js app and create this toggle to toggle between different themes one thing it's worth mentioning is the next theme package already uses the use client directive inside of the components so you can just import them directly in server components so here they mentioned that they're already using the use client directive so you can directly use them in react server components because a pattern that you can do if you're using a ui component library that doesn't yet support this use client directive you can create your own component wrappers your own client components where you're using that use client directive and then import whatever component that you want from that UI library into your own component and then you can use that client component uh, that your own client component inside of your react server components that's a pattern to kind of adapt the packages and libraries that yet don't support this use client directive but some of them do like in this case they have included the use client directive in all of their components so you don't have to wrap them with your own components. You could just import them in any React server component. It works out of the box. Now, the last thing I want to mention is how to actually customize the theme. So going back to the docs over here, 
you can see they talk about uh, the themes, the fact that Next UI actually comes built in with theming support that uses uh, both Tailwind variants and CSS variables to allow you to set and switch different themes or customize the different themes that they have. As I mentioned, they do have a light and dark theme that you can further customize. You can read through this, you can customize the themes by passing in different values for the layout object, which is stuff like border radiuses, border width, and uh, spacing units and stuff. Or you can customize the colors um, over here by using colors that comes from Next UI or extending on the colors uh, that Tailwind has or providing your own. Now, if you wanted to add your own theme, which is create a theme, uh, you can also pass in your own theme over here. For example, here they've provi provided the purple dark, and then they have, uh, they're extending a base theme. You can extend either the light theme or the dark theme, and then provide the colors and lay out specific values to use inside that theme. And that's exactly what I have done over here. So if I go to my next, uh, to my Telvin config, as I mentioned, any customization can be passed to this next UI function we imported in the beginning. I'm just uh, including this light and dark. I'm not changing anything uh, for the light and dark theme. I'm using the defaults, but I'm creating this modern theme. I'm extending the dark uh, theme or the dark version. And then I'm furthermore customizing the background, foreground, and my primary color because the next UI library has this primary, secondary, success, alert, and danger colors that you can just switch up. I'm just changing the primary as an example here to use the purple color, color that you can see over here. So on the dark, this is what comes default for the primary color. And all I'm doing is to change the primary color to be this purple. So when I switch to modern, uh, my background and foreground and these colors or the very effort in my application that I have used the primary color, for example, text primary 100, 200, 400, that's what I've used inside my components. If I go back to show you these buttons, um, you can see I'm using the primary variant for my co the color of my buttons. Now, if I switch up with the themes and change the primary color inside of my theme, uh, it just applies that new color wherever I have used that primary color. I've also, just to show some of the layout changes you can make, for example, border radiuses are different. As you can see, uh, I don't know how visible it is here, but in the dark, we have a more rounded border radius, whereby in the modern, it's more modern with less border radius. Sky's the limit. There is a lot of different stuff you can customize. Just wanted to show an example of how to creating a theme on top of the light and dark and how to customize the default values when you're extending a specific theme. That's a wrap for this video, folks. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments like always if you're learning anything from the videos that i create you can support them by giving it a like comment share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if there's a specific topic that you would wish for me to cover reach out to me in the comments i reply to every single one uh, by myself that's it for now until next time signing out Bye bye